Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back to Imagination Tech. So today I wanted to show you something, a piece of gear that I have that I use very much behind the scenes and uh, it's usually not something that you see on camera because it is this huge USB uh, HDD enclosure. So this thing has four bays. I'm just going to show you there's there's four SATA drives in there. You can just upgrade uh, each, each bay if you need more space. This has been with me for probably more than five years already and it's still very very useful. Uh, whenever I need some more space I just upgrade one of the bays. Right now it has around uh, six terabytes worth of uh, hard drives in there. So this is where I store all of my files, all of my uh, all, of, all of the footage that I take, all of the GoPro videos from, from all of my FPV flights and everything. So this has been great. But the downside is this is a USB enclosure, basically a large USB enclosure, but it's, it's, it's a USB enclosure nonetheless. And it's pretty much tied up to a single computer. If I need files uh, on the go around the house, etc., et or, on, or on, on another computer, I'd have to move or physically remove the USB plug and connect it to another device. That's uh, a little bit of a hassle. Uh, and also, this is not very portable. So when I'm out traveling, I need to you know keep this here in the headquarters. Uh, and you know for that purpose, it, is, it still actually fits very well into my workflow. But uh, I needed something that was a little bit more portable. So I came upon this little project, which is basically a network accessible storage that, that you know that's accessible here throughout my home network. And it's also small enough that it's portable and I can lug it around during my travels or when I'm when I'm going to Manila. And it has uh, two drive bays and it is really perfect for when you're on the go or even, you know, if, if you just need uh, a couple of uh, files to be accessible throughout your home network. And today I'm going to show you how to build one. This project was created by Arimbox and you can find detailed instructions on Instructables, which I've linked to in the description. The Instructables covers the build process as well as configuring Open Media Vault in detail, so do check that out. But if you want a quick version, continue watching. It's always a good idea to test all of our electronics, so I'm testing my Raspberry Pi and the SATA adapter I just got with the laptop hard disk. And here are all the 3D printed parts that we're going to be using to build our Raspberry Pi NAS. I'm not too sure if the tolerances were just too tight on this 3D print or my micro USB breakout board was a little bit too, uh, too big. But uh, after cutting and sanding uh, this area here, right, right here, I was able to fit this and it's a really, really nice snug fit. And I'll probably glue this here or something to make sure it's there permanently. But right now, it's looking like a very nice snug fit. Now we need to solder on a black and red wire to the ground and the 5 volt respectively on the USB breakout board. And we are going to be soldering it onto the bottom of the Raspberry Pi, as you can see here. And uh, you just have to make sure that you don't get them mixed up. So the red is uh, you know, further inside the board and the black is near the edge of the Raspberry Pi board. It's a good idea to also check your progress every now and then. In this case, we're plugging in a USB just to make sure that our Raspberry Pi board is powering up by, by the USB breakout board. Then we take our SATA adapter and uh, open up the plastic case and remove all of the wires and just taking note where the red and the black wires are and the other two wires are very much pretty much interchangeable. So we're just soldering in our own wires. Uh, the red goes where the red used to be and the two wires are the data wires in the middle and the black wires all the way to the left. Now we're just soldering or just tinning the back of the Raspberry Pi board where uh, the USB is connected to. And we're just going to be soldering on our, uh, our two data wires. Now we're going to be doing the same for the other USB adapter. Once that's done, we're just going to be soldering on the ground and the 5 volt wires between the two SATA adapter boards. You may want to keep a little bit of slack 
for the wires just so that you can still move around the SATA adapter boards when you need to take one or both of them off of the of the Pi case. So we're basically done soldering all of our electronics and now we just need to screw in the Raspberry Pi onto the case so that it, it doesn't move around. I've put some VHB tape to the back of uh, the USB breakout board so that I can secure it into place and doesn't move around. And you'll also notice that the case covers up two of the USB ports and that's, uh, that's those are the two USB ports that we soldered directly onto the Raspberry Pi board. And here you can see clearly how everything is wired up. And uh, I also did make a, you know, a small incision or you know, I filed away some plastic because the SATA adapter boards weren't going in completely. But yeah, here you can see I've, I have one hard disk attached and I've yet to buy a second uh, you know, laptop hard disk. But for now I have a broken one which I'm just using to fit test everything. The front of the case is actually a vent shaped as a Raspberry Pi. You can mount a small fan to the front of the Raspberry Pi enclosure. Now we just need to test and see that everything is working and you know all of the lights are lighting up. And that's, uh, and that's it, pretty much it for the build. In the original PyNAS project, they used Open Media Vault as a full-fledged NAS operating system for the Raspberry Pi. What I'm doing is just something really basic, using just shared folders that's publicly accessible within your local network. First, we need to install NTFS driver files so we can access any old NTFS formatted drives. In my case, it's already installed, so you might see a lot more lines on yours and possibly a confirmation to proceed. Once you're done with that, we'll also need to install Samba so we can share folders to Windows machines. Now you can plug in your drive and it should just auto mount to your Pi. We can type df-th to display our drives under slash media slash pi. Next, we're going to configure Samba to share our external drive or drives by typing sudo nano, which is the name of the editor, and the file we're editing, which is slash edc slash samba slash smb.conf. Pressing the down key or page down key, we go to the first item we need to check, which is the work group. And just make sure yours is also set up like this. Next, we scroll down until we reach the part where it says Profiles, which is an example of how we'll define our shared folders. So whatever is inside the square bracket is how the shared folder will appear to other computers. And the path is obviously the path to your external drive. Or you can even just set it to a subfolder under it. As for the rest of the configuration, just copy what I did here. Notice the line, force user equals pi. After that, press Ctrl X to save and exit. Next, we'll set a password for the Samba user, Pi, by typing sudo smb passwd a pi. Take note of this user and password as we'll be using that to log in from other computers. And since we made changes to the configuration, we need to restart Samba by typing sudo service smbd restart. So on our Windows computer, we can run Windows Explorer and type double backslash Raspberry Pi or whatever your Pi is named and press enter. And you should be prompted to log in with your Samba user and password the first time. You should then see the Samba shared folder we created in the Samba config. You can right click on that shared folder and click map network drive, which should allow you to easily access your shared drive for next time. So I've actually been using this for the past couple of months and it's been great because uh, I have uh, I have my movies in here. I have uh, common files that we need uh, across the network in here. Obviously, the, the the large files which I need for editing are still in in the in the in the large enclosure. Uh, but uh, for most of the other stuff, it's I've already migrated it to, to this little uh, NAS. Also brought it on my travels to Manila, and it's great because at least you know I have something portable that I can bring, and then I just connect it to the through the network, and I'm good to go. Now there are downsides to this. First, it's not a USB enclosure, which uh, earlier I've talked about the, the the cons of having a USB enclosure. But uh, the pros of a USB enclosure is you just plug it into a computer and you're, you can access everything. Whereas this one, you have to connect it to the to the, to the network. You have to connect it via to connect to it via the network as well. So it's not uh, as direct as uh, as a USB enclosure. So if you're stuck in a hotel room and that hotel room doesn't have a Wi-Fi or you know the the network is giving you 
trouble accessing the, your NAS, you just turn on your uh, mobile phone, set it up as a hotspot, and connect through there. Now the good thing about this is because it's a Raspberry Pi, you can actually do a lot more things with this uh, with this little box. So right now it's a it, it's a portable network accessible storage or NAS, but I can also configure the Raspberry Pi as a router. So you know for the aforementioned problem, I can actually solve that by you know just making sure this is connected to, to the Wi-Fi and all of my devices connect to this as a router. I can now start blocking ads. I can now uh, you know configuring the traffic and stuff like that so maybe you can do that project in the future who knows for now this is a really really great thing it's really great uh, build so so shout out to Arain box or Arain box I'm not really sure how that's pronounced but uh, he's the creator of this of this uh, project great job on this uh, little thing so um, that is going to be it for today um, we're probably going to have a couple more raspberry projects using this thing in the future but who knows maybe maybe not right but in, if you like this video make sure you hit that uh, like button down below and also if you're not yet subscribed to this channel because I have a lot of viewers probably 80% of my viewers aren't subscribers so if you're one of those click on that subscribe button make sure you're subscribed so you are notified of new videos as they come along right so I'm going to leave you with that as always keep building and keep flying